Hey y'all. Uh, this is not my usual happy butterfly gardening video because I came out to the nursery this morning and I had four monarch butterflies eclosed with obvious OE infestation. OE is a parasite that exists along with the monarchs. A lot of monarchs have a little bit of it but when there's a lot, horrible things will happen to the monarch butterfly. I have done um, a video or two on this before. And up till this point, I have had great releases and very um, seemingly healthy monarch butterflies. But this group, so here, here are my thoughts. First of all, I, I want to, I want to cry. That's the first thing. The second thing I thought is, what am I doing? Here I am making videos about what I'm doing for the monarchs, and I'm putting this out there to share, to get information out. You know, and I also do butterfly gardening and other butterflies. I mean, that's just a small. Um, component of it, but yet it is there all the same, and I want to give accurate information, and I learn as I go, and I bring you right along with me, and sometimes not the best things are going to happen. Um, when a monarch butterfly has obvious signs of OE, um, my, my dog's on my lap, you can see her ears. I don't know why she had to sit with me, but she knew, I think she, like, she knew. She knew she needed to sit with me. When a monarch butterfly eclosis um, with obvious signs of OE, it will have obvious deformities. Now, when they first pop out of their chrysalide, they all look a little deformed, but I'm talking about later after they've had time to pump the uh, fluid into their wings and just fully form, there are some obvious deformities with crumpled wings or little curls in their wings. And that is caused by an overabundance of this OE parasite. Well, I had four it closed that way today, four. So there's something going down. And so here's what I'm gonna do. First of all, this is the group that ate those giant milkweed leaves and their fifth in star. Is that the cause of it? I don't know, but I, it's highly suspect. And the giant milkweed leaves, I got some from my yard and some, I went down to Peterson's to buy another plant and they were out. So they gave me some cuttings off of theirs. What I will say it is that my giant milkweed leaves that I brought in, I would snip the ones from the bottom of the stem because they're the largest and they're gonna fall off soon. And I was thinking, well, we don't wanna waste that because as they grow, the bottom leaves fall, turn yellow and they fall off. So I was thought, well, I'm gonna use those ones because they're gonna fall off. But those have also been the ones that have been around the longest. So maybe if I'd have taken ones from the top, I don't know. There's so many things to consider, which is why I'm just sharing my thinking with you. And I would love to hear your thinking too. I'm not going to freak out and go dig out all of my giant milkweed and, but I will tell you what I am going to do. Um, oh, she's so sweet. They know, dogs know, they know when, <laughs> when you need them. <laughs> okay. Cause it's rough. It's rough when this is what you do and you're putting out in the world and then you have like a major fail. You just want to sleep it under the rug, but no, I, I can't, uh, no, 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 no. We're just going to keep going. 
and we're gonna educate. I'm gonna do some more research and get some more education and I'm going to share with you. So, hint to you guys, you know I'm always trying stuff. I mean, I'm always trying stuff. Maybe wait if I'm trying something and see how it goes for me. And if it's, if it's going well, you know, maybe that. Don't like jump on the bandwagon because I, I know some people went and were looking into getting some giant milkweed. And giant milkweed works. I mean, there are others who use it and don't have a problem. And it might not be the giant milkweed at all. Another thing could be is that, you know, I, I bring in the little baby first in stars, a female monarch, a female monarch can lay 400 eggs. It is quite possible there is a highly infected female that laid these eggs and these cat, uh, mon or butterflies that all clothes are related and all happen to have had the spores all around. When the female lays the eggs, she taps the egg under the leaf. So any spores that are stuck on her abdomen go onto the leg and around the leaf. And guess where that baby starts eating? It eats the egg and it eats around the leaf. So if it ingests a whole bunch of those, you know, that's it. It could be that. Um, so I don't know, I still have a lot of crystallites over here from that group, which I'm not gonna put any more crystallites in with them. They're gonna be isolated. I've got the enclosure out. I bleach washed it all down. It's out drying. I'm gonna wipe down the arms of my chrysalis tree with um, bleach wipes. And I'm gonna keep an eye on the rest of the chrysalide. Tape method is a way that you can test Monarchs for OE. I'm not going to demonstrate that method because somebody else has already done a fabulous video on it. And that is um, Rich Lund. So I am going to link his videos about OE below. If you want to know what, what, what is she talking about? What is that? I'm gonna link his series of videos on OE below in the description and then you can go watch them. They're, they're, not, they're not super long, but he, he, he knows it and says it so much better than I do. And so I'd rather you hear it direct from him than me. So when I bring that enclosure back in, I will put the remaining chrysalides in there and we'll see what happens. Every single one of those that it closes, even if they look good, I'm gonna test for OE. And I do believe that it would be the responsible thing for me to do since I am kind of out in the public um, with my channel and I am raising and releasing monarchs that I need to going forward um, test all of my monarchs for OE. So I am going to start doing that. Um, what do you do if they test positive? Well, <laughs> Rich Lund has a really good video on that too, which I will link below. I do not want to contribute to having OE get even more um, extensive than it already is. So uh, I hope this I hope this makes sense to you. Um, it's not my normally normal happy fun video. Um, you know, last last when I started this channel, I was using tropical milkweed, and yay! And now I'm not. And you guys are just coming along with me as I learn. So I guess what I kind of want to say is watch and enjoy, but don't take me as your end all be all person for information, but watch and enjoy and hang out with me and see my garden and my butterflies and know that as soon as I find out something that's not working right or not going well, I'm gonna try and find out why and I'm gonna try and get the information and um, share it with you guys so this isn't like a great video to like but i'd love for you to like it anyway because i'm i'm 
being real and sharing an experience that wasn't so great today. Having four, it's sad, it's really sad. And um, my butterfly friends out there, you know, you, you know, you know what that's like. Um, yeah, so that's the end of this video. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this up today. I've got a lot of videos that are lined up like behind today <laughs> in my vlog series style that I normally do. Those will show up, you know, on Friday. Maybe I'll string more together and uh, and catch up a little more. I hope this doesn't bring you down. I don't want it to bring you down. I don't want you to have this, <gasps> maybe I shouldn't. Just be knowledgeable. And, you know, if you're raising more and releasing more than 30 or 40 monarchs, if you're just releasing, you know, 20 or 30, you're, you're going to be all right. You're not going to. But if you're like really trying to do something to help get more monarchs out there and help the population, then you've got to do it the right way. And I've got to do it the right way. And that's going to involve testing and um, just sharing everything, everything with you guys. It's not all happy. Oh, look how beautiful it is, yay! Mm -hmm. it, it's, not, it's not all happy times, but a lot of the time it is. And every healthy one that I get out there is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. They're beautiful creatures. Their population is dwindling. They're losing their habitat so quickly. So if you're not raising them, that's fine. Everybody doesn't need to be, be doing it. I, I'm doing it more, again, informational and learning and to share. But plant native milkweed in your yard. Plant native milkweed in your yard. You're not contributing to OE when you do do that. Plant nectar plants that butterflies love. Coneflowers, monarchs like the flat topped with the petals going out where they can land on it. They like that style, style of flower. So, you know, still, 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 still be all into having a butterfly garden. Just know if you decide to bring caterpillars in and raise them in a situation where they're protected from predators, that there are still things that can go wrong and there are things that you need to consider to make sure you're doing if you're gonna be releasing a lot of them. And number one is making sure you're not releasing butterflies that are infected with OE, which the four, um, are not being released. So, well, I mean, they, they couldn't fly. They, oh, see, they know, they know. So anyway, I hope you're still gonna stick with me and watch my channel and I love you guys. Thank you so much for the support you give me. I love your comments. I love having conversations with you either here or um, in DMs on Instagram and I hope you're having a fabulous day. Keep doing what you're doing and I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing and I'm gonna learn as I go and I'm gonna bring you along with me.